good Wednesday evening. We want to welcome you to the Trinity Baptist Church in Westfield, North Carolina. And if you don't have a church to attend or are looking for a church to attend, we want to take time to invite you to come and be with us in any or all of our services. Our Sunday morning services start at 10 o'clock. We have Sunday school preaching at 11. Sunday night services are 6 o'clock p.m. Wednesday nights are 7 p.m. And we're located at 1233 Collins Town Road in Westfield, North Carolina. We also have an FM transmitter for those that are unable to attend inside. They can come to the parking lot, sit in their vehicle, tune the radio to 92.9 FM, and hear what's going on inside clearly. And we're thankful to be able to do that for those that are unable to come in due to sickness or disabled to where they can't come in. Well, it's good to be with you. This is our Wednesday night Facebook service for the shut-in, those that are having to work, and then many of you view other times, and we're so thankful for you doing that. But uh, our service tonight will be at 7, our in-person service, so we're looking forward to that as well. And thank you for being with us this evening. I want to go to the Lord in prayer, and if you would, please pray with us and pray for us. Father, we love you. We thank you for the opportunity to pray and help us right now, Lord, as we... Lord, just try to preach your word, sing a couple of songs that your will might be done. We pray that you'd speak to the hearts of those that are viewing. And Lord, for anybody that's not saved, I pray they'll get saved before it's too late. Pray for those that's backslid, they'll get right with you, Lord. And Father, help us all to do your will. I pray for all of our sick folk, Lord. We've got so many that are sick. I pray you'd raise them up physically. I pray for these that's had death in their families. And Lord, we also pray for all of our missionaries today, God, that you'd bless them. I pray you'd bless them, God, meet the need with the Brent Rochester and his family, members of our church, and then all the missionaries our church is privileged to support monthly, uh, financially, and prayerfully, and then others we support by prayer. And God, I pray you'd bless them in a great way. Thank you for being so good. Help us right now as we try to just lift you up and glorify your holy name, and we'll give you glory and honor for what's accomplished. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I want to do a song out of the church hymnal called Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. And this is a wonderful, wonderful song. And I hope and pray you'll sing along with us today. And uh, you just pray that God would bless this evening's Facebook service while we're having it. And uh, sing along if you know this beautiful old hymn. What a great, great message in this song. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise, just to know the set the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him. trust him 
As the songwriter said in that last verse, I'm so glad I've learned to trust him. Precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, wilt be with me to the end. Boy, what a wonderful hymn. I love that song. Hope it was a blessing to you this evening. We're going to sing another song here in just a moment and uh, hope it'll be a blessing to you. Before we do, though, let me mention that just pray for all of our services we're having, as I said, our in-person service tonight at 7 o'clock. We're looking forward to that. And uh, so pray for that. Pray for all the midweek services that God would bless. Be taking that good old authorized King James Bible and turning with us to the book of Luke chapter number 15. Luke chapter number 15. And that's where we'll be starting. Luke chapter 15, verse number 1. And... Uh, Love, love the Word of God. Thank God for it. Well, let's go ahead and do another song. We'll do our final song on tonight's video. And, and this one's called, Are You Afraid to Die? Something to think about, isn't it? If you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior, if you've been born again, you don't have to be afraid when that time comes. But a lot of people are. They're not ready. They're not prepared. And if I'm speaking to somebody that's never been born again, you need to be saved. Hope God will use this song. The words of this song maybe speak to your heart. Don't cut it off now. Keep listening. This is a beautiful old song. I'll try to do the best job I can with it. But it's a beautiful song called Are You Afraid to Die? And then, Lord willing, we'll have prayer and get right into the Word of God in Luke chapter number 15. And uh, this song has a great, <clears throat> excuse me, a great message in it. We all need to think about it right here. Are you a stranger to God? Carried away with your pride. Tell me, sinner, do you ever stop and think? Are you afraid to die? Are you afraid? Are you unsaved? Are you afraid? you don't have to be if you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. <clears throat> I'm glad, thank God I do. I'm glad the Lord saved me when I was 19 years old. Wow, time has flown by. 60 now, 60 now. And uh, coming up, wow, coming up on 61 in March. And time is not waiting on nobody. And if we're going to get anything done for God, Think about it. If we're going to get anything done for God, we better be getting at it, haven't we? Luke chapter number 15 today. Luke chapter number 15. And I appreciate the Lord helping us. Thank God I appreciate the Lord saving me back all those many years ago. 40, soon be 40. 
Wow, well, soon be 42 years ago, and God's been good to me. I ain't got no complaints with the Lord, and I appreciate God and his many, many, many blessings. I want to go to the Lord in prayer right before we look in the Word of God. Pray with us, if you would, and please pray for us. Father, thank you for the privilege to pray. Thank you for Jesus, and Lord, help us right now as we preach your Word. God, I need your help. Can't do nothing without you. Help us to be a blessing. I pray for the lost that they'll get saved those it's back so they'll get right with you. Thank you for being so good. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins and faults and failures and help us to, Lord, say everything you won't say and not say anything that you don't want said. And thank you, God, for your leadership and your guidance. Help us right now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke chapter number 15. I want to back up to chapter 14 where we left off this past Wednesday night and look at verses number 34 and verses number 35. The Bible says salt is good. I pick about that a whole lot. Next time your doctor tells you to lay off the salt, you can tell him that the word of God says in Luke chapter 14, verse 34, salt is good, and you're just gonna go with the word of God. Salt is good in a sense and for certain things. Maybe sometimes we might need to back off of it in our diet a little bit. But the Bible tells us we're the salt of the earth. We ought to make people thirsty, amen. Our lives uh, ought to be a, preservative. Salt is a preservative. And if people get right with God, amen, they can get saved. They can be preserved, amen. So salt is good. But then he says this, speaking of literal salt, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It's neither fit for the land nor yet for the dung hill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Salt is good, but if, if it loses its saltiness, its savor, its flavor, it's henceforth good for nothing. The Bible says, well, yet for the not fit for the land, put it on the land, not fit for the dung hill. Notice that, but men cast it out. God help us to live for the Lord and to stay salty for God. Now, in chapter 15, verse one, the Bible says, then drew near unto him all the publicans. Now, those were the tax collectors. Those were not Republicans. They were the tax collectors. Then drew near to him all the publicans and they were considered sinners by the Jews because they were Jewish people working for the Roman government, collecting taxes for Rome from the Jews. So then drew near in him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. Aren't you glad that the publicans and the sinners wanted to hear what he had to say? They knew, they knew there was something special about this man called Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. The Bible says when the publicans and sinners drew near to hear the Lord, that the Pharisees and scribes, the religious people, murmured. Notice the sinners wanted to hear what he had to say, but the religious crowd didn't like what he had to say. You know, it's the same way today. It's the same way today. Verse two, the Pharisees and the scribes murmured. This is what they said about our Lord. This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. This man receiveth sinners. Aren't you glad? Thank God. Jesus receiveth sinners. Boy, thank God. If he hadn't done that, I wouldn't be saved today. You say, preacher, what do you mean? I was lost. I was a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No matter who you are, what your name is, what your rank in society is, poor or middle class or rich or pretty or not so pretty or whatever you want to say, short or tall, Listen, we're all, we all have sinned, the Bible says, and come short. We don't measure up. We come short of the glory of God. I'm glad the sinners wanted to hear what he had to say. That religious crowd didn't, sadly. The Bible says in verse three, and he spake this parable unto them. He spake this parable unto them. And we're gonna look at three. We won't get them all in today this evening, but the parable of lost sheep, it's called. And this is talking about those that are innocently lost. The lost people need to be saved. Amen. And when lost people get saved, it's a time of rejoicing. This crowd called the Pharisees and the scribes, the Bible said in verse two, they murmured, complained about the fact that Jesus receiveth sinners and eateth with them when they should have been thrilled that the sinners and the publicans 
were following the Lord as far as wanting to hear what he had to say. He gives them these stories when they began to complain. And here's what he said in verse number three. And he spake this parable to them saying, what man of you having a hundred sheep? Now think about this. He's speaking to that religious crowd and scribes, Pharisees and scribes that don't like the fact that he's talking and eating with sinners. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, doth not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? Which of you, if you've got a hundred sheep, think about it. He said, and you lose one, don't you gonna, aren't you gonna go leave the 99 and go hunt and find that one that's lost? And when he found it, verse five says, he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. When sinners are saved, when people are brought to the Lord, we ought to rejoice. If we can't rejoice, something's wrong with us. Amen? Something's wrong with us. Hey, if the preacher gets up in the church house and says, just want to tell you about so-and-so getting saved, y'all hear some amens. Amen? Y'all hear some people say, praise the Lord. Thank God. When the preacher gets up and says, just want to tell you about so-and-so getting saved. And it's a hush. Silent. Only thing you can hear is the motors and the ceiling fans and the motor and the PA system, the fan cooling. Something is bad wrong. Amen. Something's bad wrong. Let me read it again, verse four. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? You'll do that, he said. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. And that's what he was doing. Verse six, he also said this about that man that found his sheep and rejoiced. Verse six, and when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, rejoice with me, for I found my sheep which is lost. He said, not only does that man rejoice, but he calls his friends and his neighbors and tells, tells them, and thank God, he found that lost sheep. Then he said in verse number seven, I say unto you, who? Those scribes and Pharisees that were complaining about him eating and talking with sinners, receiving sinners. He said, I say unto you that likewise, joy shall be in heaven. Joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. See, that religious crowd thought they didn't need no repentance, but oh, how they needed to. Jesus said, likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. He's saying we ought to rejoice. He's saying to that crowd, that religious crowd, y'all rejoice that I'm receiving sinners and eating with sinners. And I'm going to say this if they had any sense. But uh, evidently they didn't. They fought against the Lord. They fought against what he said, what he did. Jesus said there's a time, should be a time of rejoicing when that lost one is found. That's what he's saying here in these verses. And joy, he said, likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. Joy in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. I believe, I don't know how it works. I'm not going to tell you all about that because I don't know all about that. And the Bible don't tell us all about it. But according to what it says right here, thank God somehow or another those in heaven know when somebody gets saved. Maybe it's announced throughout heaven. Another one got in. I don't know. I'm saying maybe it's announced in heaven that one more got in and there's rejoicing, thank God, in heaven. There's rejoicing in heaven when a sinner gets saved. Now, if they're rejoicing in heaven, shouldn't we rejoice on earth? If you see somebody talking to a Let's just say a wicked person, a sinner, lost and undone with that God. Don't claim to be nothing. If you see somebody that's a Christian, that's a born again believer, excited about God, wanting to tell somebody about Jesus, talking to somebody that's lost, we ought to rejoice over it, thank God. Instead of saying, I can't believe they're talking to them, we ought to rejoice, thank God. Because praise God, maybe that sinner will get saved. I'm glad this sinner got saved. Amen. If you're listening to me this evening, thank God if you're saved, if you've been born again, I'm glad you got saved. 
We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise the Lord for Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Boy, I'm glad Jesus Christ gives eternal life. And I'm going to stop there this evening. We'll pick up in verse number eight, Lord willing, next Wednesday night. I hope this has been a help to you. Thank you for viewing. Boy, it's good. To, listen, I, I enjoy these videos, making them. And I tell you what, I'm looking forward to service here in a little while on Wednesday nights. For last Wednesday night in our in-person service, we didn't have many there. We don't have a big crowd at all on Wednesday nights. Very few come on Wednesday nights. But thank God for those that do. And I want to tell you something. The Lord always meets with us. The Lord always helps us. Praise the Lord. Now, let me say this about our Wednesday night attendance. Let me say this. We got folk that would be here that are unable to be here due to sickness, some to working. Yes, some lay out. We know that. We got people who can't come that would be here if they could. But I'm just saying we have a small number, but we don't have a small God. And God always blesses our service on Wednesday nights, our 7 o'clock service. We look forward to that tonight. Had a great one last Wednesday night. Looking forward to the one tonight. You can come and be with us, come and be with us. Until next Wednesday night, right here, same time, as they used to say, same time, same channel. Thank you for viewing, and God bless you is my prayer.